Fans of the Horus Heresy and fans of Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for a FAQ 8th edition announcement analysis video. So today, and that is Saturday the 22nd of April, a new Warhammer 40,000 website went up and a few posts announcing the upcoming arrival we don't have a date yet, the upcoming arrival of the eagerly anticipated Warhammer 40,000 8th edition rules. In amongst the, the blurb and the nice pictures and the fluff, there was an FAQ posted. So I've downloaded the FAQ and what we're going to do in this video is, or what I'm going to do in this video, is I'm going to go through this. I'm going to just read through it and I suppose give you my opinions on what this is telling us. This might not be an entirely serious video. For example, we're going to play weasel word bingo. So every time I find a weasel word, I'll be scoring this FAQ a point. Just if you're not sure what a weasel word is, it's an unnecessary superlative. And in the first sentence, let's have a look at this example. To many of you, this will be an awesome surprise. There you go. So weasel word, awesome. On, and on a more serious note, I'm going to be thinking about this from a point of view of the Horus Heresy game, because We've had thus far, and you know, in all fairness, there's not been much opportunity to respond yet, but we haven't had anything out of Forge World. And clearly the fate of the Horus Heresy game, 30k, is linked to the rule set of 40k. And I would think it's fair to say in the community there is a very different opinion as to what we want out of 30k to what Games Workshop, the main GW business, might want to do with 40k. There's a degree of interest and also a degree of concern, I think, in the 30k community as to what could happen in 8th edition. And the concern is we want to see the preservation of Warhammer 30,000, the Horus Heresy game, pretty much as it is, because for most people, we really like it. Let's look at this, this FAQ, and this is from Games Workshop. This is not from Forge World. Have a look at this, and I'm going to subject it to a little bit of analysis and see what it tells us. Right, so from the top, the new edition of Warhammer 40,000, your questions answered. A new edition of Warhammer 40,000 is on the way, exclamation mark. To many of you, this will be an awesome surprise. So bing, there we go, weasel word, one. To others, an exciting, oh, two weasel words, confirmation of what you have already suspected. For all of you, we're sure it heralds questions aplenty. Here then is an FAQ asterisk that answers a few of them. Right, asterisk, let's see what this means. Um, so at the bottom of page three, and I always read the asterisks first. The addition, so asterisk, here we go. The addition's not even out, and you guys have a have an FAQ. How times have changed? Well, not quite changed because we have a typesetting error here. That is have a FAQ. Uh, F is not a vowel. But anyway, okay, so that, that doesn't tell us anything apart from whoever proofread this didn't proofread it properly. For more news and information over the coming days and weeks, make sure to check out warhammercommunity.com. We'll be running daily articles on all things Warhammer 40,000. There'll be news, there'll be rules, previews, and there might even be some pictures of some new models. Right, so, so it's, it's telling us the Warhammer community is a place to go for for updates around the news. Fair enough. That seems to be the MO at the moment for Games Workshop communication. And I'm glad they're doing that because I don't like Facebook. And if you want to know why I don't like Facebook, um, go have a read about how Facebook data mines your life. Anyway, uh, the next, so the first point, uh, is my army still valid? Yes, it certainly is. You'll still be able to use your army in the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. All current armies will be supported with new rules. So what does that say? Well, I guess it's saying no factions are going to disappear. So we're not going to see a retcon nomming of, say, the Space Dwarves, um, which happened in the distant past. So we, we shouldn't see anything similar to what happened to the Zotes either, um, vanishing from the game. So if, and, and I guess that's, that's a fairly straightforward and logical statement, isn't it? They're not going to upset the fan base by taking factions out. So for example, if that said, oh, by the way, we're dropping the Tau, there will be a riot. Next point, can I still use all my models? Yes, every Warhammer 40,000 miniature we sell today, ooh. Yes, every four, Warhammer 40,000 miniature we sell today will be usable in the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. What's more, they'll be supported with new rules, 
which will be available from the get-go in handy, oh, weasel word, low-cost books. Right, so we are going to we're going to have to get new army lists, certainly if you play Warhammer 40,000, so I read really, this as the current codices are going to become obsolescent. Right, interesting point use on words here. Every Warhammer 40,000 miniature we sell today. What about Warhammer 40,000 miniatures you've sold in your pa in the past games workshop? I presume they're still all going to be usable given that they are currently quite usable. Clarification, I would say there's gonna be a lot of people who are concerned by this statement if you're suggesting that only models currently in production are going to be supported by your new rules. That would um, not be an acceptable position. Ah, okay, so Horus Heresy fans, even Forge World models, question mark. Yes, even, even all, so given it's, just, it's all part of the same company, it's hardly an even all, is it? It should be a given. Even all of your Warhammer 40,000 Forge World models. Hmm. So I'm presuming that means all of the Horus Heresy range. But what does that mean? Does that mean it's still usable in, is this talking about 30K or 40K? We have to presume as it, until we see a mention of the Horus Heresy, I guess we've got to assume that the Horus Heresy sits within Warhammer 40,000. So let's move on. Wait, did you guys, blow the universe question mark I guess that's oxymoronic you can't blow the universe up but anyway nope well good uh, there is very much still the Warhammer 40,000 setting you know and love now you know and love well mm, weasel word now that's not to say we won't see the story advance there's some pretty epic stuff ahead oh, there's a weasel word you can certainly expect to see the story arcs that began in the recent Gathering Storm campaign books continue to unfold with plenty of exciting developments to look forward to. So this statement, I think, very much puts this FAQ in the context of Warhammer 40k, and it's not making any commentary on the Horus Harrison line by Forgeworld. Fair enough. Okay, so what's the next thing? How can I get the rules? Question mark. We're, now, this is interesting. We're going to make it easier than ever to get your hands on the rules and start playing. The core rules for the game will be free. Ooh, welcome to, uh, welcome to 2017 Games Workshop. And you'll have several options on how to get your hands on the full rule book. Watch this space for more. Well, I'm guessing that means not this space, but the Warhammer, Warhammer 40,000 community. So what the proposition here, this is a radical change for Games Workshop. This is a really radical change for Games Workshop. However, it's only just catching up with the industry standard and they're saying that they're going to make a, a core set of rules f available for free. Is that going to be kind of like a, a simplified streamlined set of rules that allow you to play? And if we're going to get that, are we going to get rules with models or a, 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 an introductory set of army lists available to play? Interesting. However, there's, a, there's an intimation here that clearly we're going to get, they're still going to be publishing rule books. I'm guessing this will be in the hard copy and e format. Now, I hope, I've got some hope here because we, it has, and you'll have several options on how to get your hands on the full rule book. Now, several to me says at least three because one is one, a couple is two, several is three plus. Now, at point of release on seventh edition, you had to buy a humongous great box set. Now, there was one good thing about this box set because they'd split the rules into a, its own distinct rule book. It was properly indexed. It was the best written set of rules thus far. Certainly the most uh, easy to re cross-reference set of rules so far. So that was a good thing. However, what was not so good was the fact that you got a whole book of story and a whole book of artwork as well. And this entire bundle cost 50 pounds. So. I mean, I remember when I bought mine, I bought it and straight away the art book and the history book went on eBay because I had no use for them. I wanted the rule book. I didn't want to have to get the whole, this whole big shebang about 40K. I've been pay, playing for 40K for 30 years. I know the basic background. Um, and I think it's important that Games Workshop deal with this several options point here and make sure that customers can buy just the rules if they choose to do that. And then the final point here, it says, have you dumbed down 40K? Not at all. So I think, let's, let's just think about the question. I think the, the question here is clearly responding to concerns within the community that um, 40K is going to be sigmarized 
um, as Warhammer Fantasy Battle was. And uh, there's been a lot of concern around this, and, and justly so, because um, the change from Fantasy Battle to Sigma was a, was a radical one, and for a lot of players, a painful transition. Many players have embraced it and greatly enjoyed it. However, there are certain people who um, uh, were with large armies who had invested a lot of time, resource, and you know effort into those models, which were completely abandoned in the age of Sigma. So, the, what they're trying to do is address this question here. So they say, not at all. We've made it easier for new people to enter and get to grips with the basics. At the same time, we've made sure you can add as much depth and complexity as you like. There's some fantastic, ooh, weasel word again, new gameplay elements coming. We've done, what we've done is re-examine re every aspect of, we're gonna have to do a little page switch. God, wonders of modern technology. Every aspect of the game and made plenty of improvements, many based on the gaming community's feedback and suggestions, encouraging. If you play today, this game will is recognizably still Warhammer 40,000. This game is recognizably still Warhammer 40,000. They're going to make it easier for people to get into it and then add complexity. How could we read this? Are they saying they've made it easier to get into by writing the game more clearly and in a more concise format than we've seen before? I don't know if we'd see that because given that we're on to 7th edition and, and 7th edition was a pretty mature and well-developed rule book, I don't know if they're going to make it any easier. This sounds to me like a sort of modularization, oh gosh that's a good word, modularization of the game to have a core set of mechanics and then perhaps additional add-on rules, lots of optional rules that you can, that you can choose to play or play not to play. Which is an interesting prospect because clearly it's not say that to me isn't saying Warhammer Forty Thousand is a complete unified set of rules. You either play it or you don't. There's no at the moment. There's no such thing as optional rules. Special rules are special rules. You play them. Morale you play. Uh, psychic phase you play. This is suggesting that you're going to have a core set of rules, but then there's add-ons as well. Interesting. This is purely around the accessibility of the game. I hope that's the case. I hope we don't see any, they're not dumbing down the game. However, reading a statement like that, it does make me concerned that simplifications of a game have occurred. And when simplifications occur, they can make the game simplistic. Simplification is good, simplistic is bad. On the fence about that. So back to the army lists. So what happens to my codexes? Well, it's codices. It's a second grammar error there. The rules in our current range of Warhammer 40,000 codices aren't compatible with the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. These books will be going off sale very soon. Uh, if you want to pick any up, now's the time, as all of the great hobby content and background information will be as valued as ever. Well, true, but I would expect the history to last through. But that says to me, if you're, home, if you're the Warhammer 40,000 player, um, you can expect another FAQ after this, which will show you how to use your current codices as kindling to start fires because they're essentially going to be worthless from a rulebook point of view. And you're going to need to buy new codices as well. Perhaps if you like 7th edition and you have no truck with going to 8th, um, if these books are going off sale, perhaps I might put them onto sale and sell them at a discount to clear the stock. So there may be an opportunity for you there to get hold of a book cheaply if you want to stick with 7th or you know maybe if you just wanted to pick up a book for some history or background maybe there's an opportunity there be interesting to see what happens there but yeah that for um for a 40k player that's for present for a 41st millennium player that's a big uh, that's saying you got a lot of new stuff to buy I guess at the same time perhaps it's encouraging because there's been a lot of disquiet about games workshop main's ability to keep codex to keep codices i'm just saying it now to keep their codices up to date and there are many codices that are significantly out of date and well in need of a rewrite again we have no reference to forge world at all and the use of codex is complete is complete anathema to the forge world way of doing things we have army books and we have the black books so this to me says this is nothing to do with forge world what's in the new starter box a new starter box question mark that'll be exciting new mods are always good i guess we'll fill it with some awesome new miniatures oops oh, i think i'm giving them a weasel word there 
Come on, we can't spoil all the sprites. Right, well, that doesn't really matter. There's a new box set coming up, maybe. Are you getting rid of points? Right, important point here. Not at all. There will be a full point system for use in matched play. One of the three ways to play covered in the rule book. Right, we'll come back to that point once we've dealt with this point. What do you mean three ways to play, inverted commas, question mark? We realize that people like to play Warhammer 40,000 in three different ways. Now this is going back to the previous blog post we had. Three broad, broad systems are covered in the new edition. One, open play is the most flexible and easiest to get started with, allowing you to use any miniatures that you like. This sounds very Age of Sigmar. So this is like a laissez-faire, points-free, quick and easy balance system. Two, narrative play, where you can refight the iconic battles of a 41st millennium or create your own campaigns and sagas. So, so as opposed to, this might be something like where you want to do the last stand of the Crimson Fists and create an interesting scenario where there might be some special rules and you can maybe fight 30 space marines against a huge horde of orcs or something equivalent. And three, match play is designed for more balanced and competitive games, ideal for gaming clubs, leagues and tournaments. However you want to enjoy playing Warhammer 40,000, there'll be rules for it. So. Option three there is essentially what the current rules are. Let's go back to th this thing. So what they're saying now is the points are only going to be required for option three, which is matched play. And the other two, the other two approaches don't require it. So that raises then a question of do how are they going to bother with any sort of balance mechanism for the first two? I mean, arguably the second doesn't require it as much, but you thought you'd need some, you know, I mean, some sort of open play rule. Because, you know, otherwise you could, we could imagine a scenario. So, you know, one guy turns up to his club. He's got like, I don't know, 60 World Eater Space Marines. Other guy comes along. Uh, oh, I've got, all I've got with me today is my Warlord Titan. If you recycle your World Eater Marines around 800 times, I think we, got, we will get a balanced game. Let's play. That's not very fun, though. So, hmm, interesting. Another thing this doesn't say is, it doesn't say what the point system is going to be like. It says there will be a full point system. It doesn't tell us where it will be. I mean, I'm guessing this is going to be in the new codices. Guess, however, it doesn't say whether or not it is comparable to what we currently have. So is there going to be a complete rewrite of points? Right, next point. Why should I not just stick with current Warhammer 40,000? Question marks of 7th edition. This is the version of Warhammer 40,000 you've been asking for. Well, that's just... No, that, that's just a leading statement. No, it's it's your latest attack. It's your latest revision of rules based on community feedback. Not everybody has been asking for this. You know, you shouldn't assume to speak for the entire community there because that, that's just... A, that, that annoys me, that statement. Anyway, so this bit, the second bit, is the proper answer to this. We've listened to your feedback, and we really believe that this is the best Warhammer 40,000 has ever been. Okay, so that's more encouraging. So you're saying you're listening to your player base, you're considering their suggestions, and you're incorporating the good ones. So that's basically saying, trust us with this, we've listened to you, we've created this new game. Mm, okay. Next point, will the rules be updated annually uh, a la... Allah, the general ha general's handbook. So the general's handbook was the Age of Sigmar bounds book. I mean, this should be a this is, oh God, again another type of a space la, and then you need an accent there. So uh, as in a la carte. But yeah, anyway, so that's three on grammatical errors. Right. What a great idea. Ah, so ah, interesting. What a great idea. We've had such a fantastic response to our community-led approach with Warhammer Age of Sigmar rules that we've committed to doing the same for Warhammer 40,000. Ooh, so you are getting this, we are getting the Sigmar treatment, this says. You'll be able to submit your questions and queries on the Warhammer 40,000 Facebook page and we'll make sure we can continue to evolve the game as feedback rolls in. Right, Games Workshop, you need to open up other social media channels. Not everybody appreciates or likes Facebook's approach. You need to, you need some other approach there, I would say. Um, Facebook is not a, a universally liked or used social media platform. You know, you need to be, you need to be able to have your community speak to you in a way other than Facebook. It's fine to use Facebook, but you need more than that option. It sounds to me, so if we use project management speak here, so there's two kind of like main, so let's take the two main models of project management. You have what's called waterfall project management, where you've got kind of like, um, almost like sequential 
everything goes in sequence and like this is your classic long-term projects and this is how GW seems to have generally dealt with these rules revisions they're quite they're periodic and full very comprehensive and a big deal this sounds like they're going to more of an iterative approach where they make lots of smaller changes on a on a more ad hoc basis to keep the game more alive so mm, is that a good thing or a bad thing I'm not sure on that it's good in the way that they're not hamstringing themselves to only making a, revisions at by when they come to do say each edition uh, that's a good thing however that then also opens them up to kind of pressure campaigning for particular rules changes as well so they're going to have to be careful to resist community pressure from small interested pressure groups they be careful to maintain a sense of balance there so there's advantages and disadvantages with that next point i haven't played 40k in a while welcome back the new warhammer 40,000 is easier to learn and quicker to play but still has all the tactical strategic and narrative depth that you would want from a game set in the incredibly rich ooh, two weasel words there setting of a 41st millennium it's going to be easier than ever to get started and more fun than ever to master so that's kind of re that, that's just that's just reiterating what's already been said elsewhere. And then the next question, why should I trust you, question mark? Come on, this is new Games Workshop trademark. Hmm. I could make an unflattering comparison there about trusting and, uh, but anyway. Oh no, here we go, all right, so they are poking fun of themselves. Seriously though, everything we're talking about now is just an extension of all the community engagement work we've been doing over the last year and a half, and that's been a good thing. We've learned a lot from you guys and gals, and we've really tried hard to make sure everything you've asked for is included. Yeah, and don't forget to obviously keep your own creative direction and don't get swayed by small vocal opinion groups. Uh, don't forget about silent majorities. If we've missed something, drop us a line on the Warhammer 40,000 Facebook page. Other social media platforms exist. Remember, get G-dubs. Let's have those other communication channels and let us know. We'll make sure your requests are given proper consideration. That's good. He's saying we're open. We're open to feedback from the community. What's this really saying? I mean, I, I suppose this is. This is. I guess this is trying to give us all reassurance that what they're doing is being based on community engagement. So it's. So it's good because they're saying, well, we're listening to our customers. It's something that Games Workshop has been criticised for not doing in the past. So. You know, that, that you've got to give we've got to give credit here for this. I suppose that's a good thing. It's painting a picture that eighth edition a chain they created eighth edition based around what the player base has asked for, or certainly the player base that is engaged with this discussion process, as opposed to a group of games designers in GWHQ sitting down having a creative thought bubble session and then writing eighth edition based on that. Where can I find out more? We'll be running daily articles on the run-up to release on warhammercommunity.com. Every aspect of a new edition will be covered, from rules to new miniatures with, and advancements in the setting. So that's a 41st millennium orientated statement. I suppose that's encouraging because it's saying we're going to, you're going to be told about everything before it actually appears. Interesting. So I guess that's going to encourage feedback on 8th edition before it's even released. Interesting. So are they saying they're open to changing this before they've even released it? Iterative approach, not waterfall approach. Interesting thoughts there. Does that make me, does that, that makes me just a little bit concerned. Have they got a clear creative direction for 8th edition here? I mean, being, engaging with the community is a good thing, but you don't want to be purely community-led either so hmm. again that you can see that sort of that's that balance i'm thinking about anyway i love it i want it when can i have it okay so another sort of leading statement but i think what we're trying to say is when it when will it be released right really soon you'll be playing the new warhammer 40,000 this year so we're at the end of april so we've kind of got seven months to go fair enough i'm assuming that is so the kind right We'll let you know when we have more news on an exact release date. Stay posted. For the latest news, follow us on the Warhammer 40,000 Facebook page. Other social media channels exist. Or subscribe to our newsletter. Fair enough, right? Newsletter, good. So if you don't want to use Facebook, you can use a newsletter. 
good. But don't forget G-Dubs, we need another social media channel to engage with you other than Facebook. Right, mm, that's very fluffy, that. that that's, no, it's not very fluffy, it's very vague. It doesn't really say anything about when they're gonna give us, apart from, you know, I'd assume it's saying they'll have it released by the 30th of December, which gives us an opportunity to play it on the 31st of December. So that's kind of like the worst case scenario. But it doesn't say that the release will be in Q3 this year or something like that. So that's, you know, start of Q3 or something. That's pretty open-ended though. What do I do now? Now's the time to start getting your army ready. Hmm, why is that? With the addition of three ways to play, there are now more ways to build your collection than ever before. Open play frees you from all constraints. So now's the time to just pick a model you've always wanted and paint it up. So that's very Age of Sigmar. So that's just saying, ha, ah, well, I've got my I've got my Space Marine army, but I've always liked that Orc War Boss, so I'm gonna buy it and throw it in with my Space Marines. Really? For you narrative players, why not start theming your collection around your favourite battle? Just like many of you, we want our armies to be fighting fit the match play in the new edition. That's why you will be able to read daily articles on the Warhammer community site that will tell you about all the new rules, great units to include, and tactics for every army. Hmm, I would actually say do the opposite, unless you've got a really clear view about what your future army might look like. Particularly if you're interested in matched play, I would say don't do anything at the moment with your army. Hang fire, wait until you see what the new vision looks like. Don't start building more units, because what they've, what they've told us in this message already is, your current codices are redundant and void. New codices are gonna come along that you'll need to buy. They're kind of intimating here that we're gonna get some heads up, but until we get those heads up, I wouldn't do any, I wouldn't build anything, unless you're going for free play stuff, if that's gonna be your way to play, even though we don't yet know how that works. Even then I'll be cautious. I wouldn't build an army at the moment based on this statement. I would want to see from Games Workshop, I want to see the way that match play armies are going to work before I start building those armies. Now, let's take this again into the Forge World theme. Well, the whole kind of like tone of this is talking about Warhammer 40,000. And we haven't had one mention directly of the Horus Heresy. Every, any link I've made here to the Horus Heresy has been inferred by the fact that Horus Heresy is a sub-game or sub-genre of Warhammer 40,000. So for us Horus Heresy players, we don't know anything from this, really, apart from... We are getting a new rules edition. There's going to be three ways to play. However, there's nothing implicit here that says that the current army lists will change at all because it talks about codices and the army lists and the Horus Heresy Black Books. I think really, and that brings me to the conclusion of around what I think of this as a player of the Horus Heresy, we're now waiting on an FAQ from Forgeworld which does exactly the same thing as this, or well, hopefully, well, we actually want something that's more specific than this. We want something as a Horus Heresy player base that gives us some reassurance and some guidance around how 8th edition is gonna play out into the heresy. And I guess when we look at this three ways to play, a lot of what the Horus Heresy is about doesn't fit at all with open play. As an, and as a matter of fact, in Age of Darkness, Unbound lists were specifically limited. So open play is actually the anathema of the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness game style. Um, you don't do it. It's Horus Heresy is all about two, which is your campaigns from the Black Books, and three, which is the army book based structured army games. And and you know, Heresy is very much about that. So hmm, yeah. I think we need uh, we need Forgewall to speak on 8th edition. That's the next thing that we want here. What do you think? What I'm really trying to drive at with this is, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you what this means one way or another, really. What I'm trying to encourage you to think about is to critically assess what this FAQ tells us and other information that is inevitably going to be disseminated. And think carefully about what it means to you as a gamer, and particularly if you've invested large amounts of time and money into the game. If you are using the social media channels like Warhammer 40,000 on Facebook, if you have any questions or concerns to start feeding those back at this stage. With a seven month time window available before release, there's plenty of time to get those opinions aired and made them, make them aware to 
the new, as they call themselves, the new Games Workshop, which is open and welcomes feedback from the community. Let me know what you think in the comments. Keep it constructive and objective, because that's what this is about. You know, it's not about saying, oh, 8th edition is going to be horrible, or I'm bad, uh, you know, 7th edition was rubbish, I can't wait to see the back of it. You know, it's about thinking positively and constructively about this, and if there are concerns, what do you do constructively about that and to try and influence the direction? Just to finish, we had nine weasel words and three typesetting errors. I am pernickety, aren't I? Thank you very much for listening. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.